Hello. How are you? Happy Saturday. Um, why does everything look weird? Why does everything look, what is, maybe it's just me. <laughs> you know, I just put lotion on my face and look, it's making me red. Yeah, love it. Anyone have this issue? <laughs> okay. How are you? Happy Saturday. Um, happy Halloween. I totally forgot today's Halloween. So um, what a weird year for Halloween. So I hope everyone's figuring out a way to um, persevere through that. Maybe doing the candy shoot or handing out candy some way or I don't know. I, I don't have to worry about it anymore. So I really feel for folks because it is kind of a fun it's a really fun rite of passage for kids, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's so cool. So, what a bummer. Hey, Sydney, how's it going? Um, I have this cord touching my screen. This is what's griefing me right now. Here we go. Touch screen computer. I always forget my computer is touch screen, and then a cord will be touching it, and it it doesn't like that so all right well I am sewing some stuff for this upcoming sample sale I know it sounds kind of funny that I'm sewing stuff for it but what I'm doing is just finishing things that are cut especially from the old days and um, uh, and I've made so many things here that I don't keep all of them I just don't need 12 pocket buckets or whatever I'm not actually not sewing selling any pocket buckets at this sample sale but maybe the next one hey Dar Hey Allison, how's it going? Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you at in the in the whole world. Um, I uh, uploaded a new video on um, French seams for side seam pockets. So if anyone's looking at that, at all of our outside doors, <laughs> I love it. She might play a trick on you at some point. You better be careful. <laughs> Did she dress up? She better have dressed up. I don't hand candy, candy to kids that don't dress up. I'm hardcore like that, but I'm really generous too. So uh, we are the first time ever living somewhere where we will we where we will not get any trick or treaters, which is kind of weird. Hey Tanya, good morning, good morning. All right, so I have you probably some most of you probably don't even know what these products are. They're kind of like what is a what's a zip double. Um, so, but it, it should be interesting if you're interested in binding or bag making. And if you have any bag making questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Um, and yeah, anyway, so the notions case is actually a free pattern I have, and I still have a ton of them cut out, but all the stiffener for them is missing. Um, so I don't know why that is. So I'm just going to, I had to like pull stiffener from somewhere else. So. I'm kind of like, what do I sew first? Do you guys want, hey Ray, uh, do you guys want notions cases or zip doubles? Any Anybody have a vote out there? You're wel welcome to say, you know, hey Elizabeth, how's it going? Oh Ray, come on. They're gonna get the candy either way, you know that. <laughs> I can heckle them. I can give them a hard time, you know. I did my house up for Halloween. I was like the only one in our, neighbor, our neighborhood. So everybody came to my house. So yeah, you know. No, no, I have stiffener array, don't worry. I had cut pieces though of these Notions case stiffener. and But for some reason, I have a whole box of stiffener for, I think this is the, um, either the bottom of the pocket bucket or the end of the project bag. And I don't know why I remember when this happened because me and Rayanne were like, what the heck? So we would order them, order them. We would order that they would cut um, stiffener and vinyl for us. So they, they manufactured a few of our products for a year and a half. It was a very bl small blip in, in time. But one of the great things they would do for us is they would cut our vinyl and our stiffener for us because their machine could handle not... Um, melting it together. Ours melted it a little bit more. So 
Anyway, notions case, Sarah? Okay. Oh, nice, Tanya. I mean, it's Saturday. It's Halloween. <laughs> Unofficial holiday. All right, so I found... I have, a, I have a ton of things cut out, but what I'm trying to do is match things that are already partially sewn. Like this is, you guys, it's like, this kind of stuff stresses me out when I have all this onesie twosie half sewn stuff and I have I have this compulsion to finish, finish it, you know? Um, I cut some backs to go with these because I know people will want the knit. So um, those will find good homes and have some binding. This isn't the binding I put with this, but it goes really good. So I'm sticking with it. And I would get things like this, like we would get our order from the, the factory back and they would include things like this. It's stitched to the stiffener. They never finished sewing it. And this kind of thing would just kind of be like, Ugh, why didn't you just sew everything in the box? But they got kind of strict. I would say, hey, you know, I, I want this many. I would send them everything they needed. And then if they overcut or um, if they ran out of time, because I would say you can make extra of any of these things, um, that's fine. They wouldn't, they, if they got kind of part way and they were like, oh, we have enough, they would stop. They wouldn't just finish it. I'm like you've already spent labor on that. Why wouldn't you just finish it and charge me? Yeah. <laughs> Allison. <laughs> See, you know, um, I, this is the first year that I have not bought Halloween candy and it has been a good thing. I mean, a terrible thing and a good thing. So you guys know what I mean, I'm sure. All right, so I found these were bound. So I'm gonna do two with rainbow and I'm gonna two with this right here because the um, unicorns have this. So this is my plan. These are already, some of these are already bound. I'll do the knit ones start to finish so that you can see how I, how I did it. So this is gonna be a really good reminder, a gentle reminder for those of you who sell things that you make that you're probably not charging enough because I actually am really fast at sewing these. But even at my, like I, I didn't kill myself sew, sewing these, but if I was sewing them, I could do six easily start to finish in one hour. That doesn't sound like a lot probably for what this is. I'll show you what this is. This is, this is the little case right here. This is this little see-through front case. It's nice and stiff. Um, you know, it has the zipper. Very simple. I've seen people copy this design. And um, this is it. This is what I would do. Six an hour. So let's do some math. Oops, I didn't make it. Let's do some math. This is my your, my unsolicited gentle reminder for those of you selling things and you're probably not charging enough. Um, I used to charge a base rate of $25 an hour for labor on production. So anything we sewed, I charged as my over, or like my amount, I would, it was like my, that's what I would charge, $25 an hour. So then I would say, okay, six divided by 25, how much, or 25 divided by, yeah, yeah, whatever, you know what I mean? I would figure out how much that labor was per, right? So what is, what is that? That's like, it's like 250, right? Um, three, six, nine, no, 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 no. I mean, five, 10, 50. What is it? I can't remember, 354, something like that? I can't do math in front of a camera. It's just one of my weird things. I'm really good at math. I can't do it in front of people. So six times four is 24. So yeah, it was like $4.20 or something like that, labor. We sold these for $18 retail. And some folks were like, that's a lot of money. So $4 in labor. And then um, the materials, that's what it was. The materials was about $2.54 per case zipper, vinyl, binding, front fabric, back fabric, label, zipper pull, zipper pull cord, okay? That was $2.54, which probably sounds now really cheap when you see all the things that are involved in it. We had to cut all of those things. So cutting was the hardest thing for me to price. And um, I would generally just say 50 cents an item some things were a lot more than that and some things were a lot less than that. But when you have that many materials and findings, 
You have to keep track of all of it. You have to uh, bundle it, which is a term for keeping things in their um, order of operations for the sewing and easily accessed and everything ready. So that's really easy for the sewing operator, me or Ann, um, to do it, right? So there's that, that doesn't get accounted for in labor. So now we're up to 650, we'll, we'll, we'll be on the lower end, $6.50 in materials and labor. We have not accounted for marketing um, or all the time it takes to run a business. We have not accounted for overhead, which nobody does in our industry and they should. I used to, I did eventually. So if I wanna wholesale this, so, so now we're gonna talk about profit margin. So usually uh, it was 1.6 times that. So let's see if, um, if I remember right. So I think that ends up being like $9, right? So it it's a total of $9 once I add the profit margin. So that's how I got to the $18 retail cost because if I wanted to sell them wholesale, they were $9 each and I made about $2 per case. And remember all those things I didn't account for it. So um, this is just my gentle reminder that you guys should charge more. So I actually did end up making money at Chicken Boots, but um, I think in the end, if I looked at everything considered, I probably broke even uh, at the very end. So like right now I'm, I'm living on my savings, my savings, what I got out of that um, but that doesn't account for all the stuff sitting here and all the investment I put into it, right? So just want you guys to charge more. All right, let's sew. <laughs> you guys didn't ask for that, I know, but this is my way of being, you know, giving back <laughs> somehow. <laughs> all right. I have all kinds of goopy stuff on here. This, there's a crack. Can you see this crack right here? This was when my um, box light fell. It's really starting to bug me. I feel so bad for my machine. It has this crack on the table. Wah. All right. So I have these, um, I, don't, I do have some vinyl. I don't, these aren't quite big enough, but I'm gonna make them work. <laughs> ah, so yeah, extra work, extra work, right? So um, I'm gonna cut these over there at the iron. Did I lose you guys? Are you guys like, I did not want that lecture. <laughs> or are you kind of cr gently crying inside? You're like, oh, I don't charge enough. No one does. No one does. Oh, wait, I need to move my, uh, I need to move my keyboard so I can rotate you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I found that missing piece. Well, this was the piece I was missing the other day, wasn't it? It was on the back of my cart hanging off. All right, let's just cut a few of these. This is my way of utilizing the stiffener. I'm just going to make it work. I'll lose a little bit on the Side. Sorry I couldn't get to this before I started streaming today. I was actually watching a funeral um, for um, a, an uncle that I don't actually know very well. But he was my, you know, my stepdad's brother, so. And I couldn't get the live stream to keep going and I realized it stopped, so I was kind of bummed. All right, one, two, three. I need quite a bit more though. Hi, Sean. How's it going? You have finally caught the sewing bug. I don't know. You seem busy doing all kinds of cool stuff these days. <laughs> I did say the stiffener, but um, yeah. Oops. Okay, let's stop. Let's stop stack cutting like this. Yeah. Exactly, Sean. Yep. It is that info is really critical and I, I, and my caveat you guys is that I am by no means an expert or an authority on um, 
finances and business and stuff like that. So I just, I want to say that, but I know for a fact what it took to do all that and it was never enough. It doesn't account for the fact that you are working 24 hours a day. You cannot stop. You're at home. You know, it's like the tragedy of our, our lives is that, uh, you know, mobile devices were invented. So we can see anytime someone's emailed us or talked smack about us or they're copying our designs or our fabric designs or whatever. So the stress is always there. Your bank account is always there. Your employees are always there. They are always there. And social media is always there. And you know, one thing, Hi, Derek. <laughs> no, wet, cold, and dark. Oh, I heard that um, Sean Connery died. I couldn't believe that. Um, <laughs> that's all. Yeah, right, Sydney. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, I need some. I need. Where's the vinyl? I thought I triple checked. I didn't have to walk away today, but I do. It's right here. I have a few cut pieces. Um, what was the thing I was about to tell you guys? What was the thing I was? Oh, so I highly recommend. I'm sure that there's folks that who are serious about their business that plan on doing this and just can't carve out the time to do it, but I highly recommend carving out the time because it'll actually save you time and money quickly. And that is utilize your local SBDC. I don't know what it's called in your community, but that means the Small Business Development um, Center or SCORE, which is retired folks that um, volunteer to mentor and help other businesses. I will say that if you're doing a sewn product, they may kind of go, mm, you know, because a lot of small business development agencies, they are free for you to use. And there's lots of classes and seminars and things like that. But you also, hello. <laughs> um, hello, Kika. How's it going? <laughs> oh, you and Derek sound like you're in the same weather pattern. Um, uh, they are there. You get these mentors and they're, they're really helpful. But they're also there to try and help the businesses in their community. This is why I want you to know so that you don't feel bad or guilty because we do that for utilizing this assistance. They're there to try and help the businesses of their community because that helps the town because then you generate revenue and tax dollars for the community. So they're always looking for someone to lift up and help because it helps the entire town and it also pays their their jobs you know set for their jobs so but I will tell you there was one that I went to and I've told you guys this before and he had this saying and it irked the ever loving crap out of me and it was is your business a hobby or a business and he said it in a way that he was insinuating that this is a hobby and I was like I work a hundred hours a week, dude. It is not a hobby. And I've been doing this for 10 years. I had been doing that one for 10 years. This, this is my, like my third business. So, um, you know, don't let that dissuade you because if you can see the vision and they can't, that's just a matter of time and communication and, and they'll see the light eventually, you know, um, just be prepared to answer the hard questions and do the work because it is really worth it. Even if you get out of it what you don't want to do or um, what you how you don't want to do it. I think that's really, really helpful. So, did you, Derek? That's awesome. I was really sad to hear he passed away. All right, so let me get set up so you can see a small production run here. I have, this is how I would normally, I only have three right here in knit, but we'll just do all three. Um, I always make sure I have everything <laughs> because I don't get up after that. Okay, so I have my three. 
One, two, three. Uh, let's see. Do we want black or cream zipper? I've never seen the knit cases with cream, but I have a photograph for it in, oh, but I don't have it with the knit binding. We'll do cream. I'm gonna have to photograph this. This is the other thing I'm thinking of. What don't I have to photograph? Cause I don't want to photograph everything. <laughs> I don't like that part. So yes, Sarah, that is such an important thing. Bigger is not better. Right, Noemi? Exactly. Keep it small, keep it all. Oh, I like that. Oh, three inches of snow in Boston. What the heck? So, um, yeah, one of the things I used to say in my business group, and it wasn't a popular thing I would say at all, was because <clears throat> I was in a business group of other folks um, that were yarn dyers mostly. Let's see. All but two of them were yarn dyers. One was a pattern designer and teacher in knitting. Uh, the other one was also a sewn products folk like me. Um, and um, the thing I would always say, especially to the yarn dyers, was, is, and especially to one in particular, was you need to raise your prices. And I, her prices weren't low at all. But here's my, here's my, my, um, here's my rationale. Say you, what if you upped your prices by 30%? That's a huge hike. And you lose a, a certain number of customers or sales. Does it equal the same dollars you were at before? Because if it does, you just reduced your workload by more than 30%, but you don't have to ship those orders, market those, market those products or make, make those products or order the materials for those products or stock the materials for those products. And if so, if you, if you just did 30% more and you lot, I would do the math. Okay. I could afford to lose this many sales per month and I would be making the same amount of money with less work. So I think that's a really good thing, a really good exercise to do. Cause I was telling her, I'm like, you know what? Your stuff is so unique, not unique, unique, but it fairly hard to find, very sought after, very high quality. Um, and I thought she should double her prices and she just, you know, she obviously, that's a scary proposition. And I know that that would be kind of crazy, but at the same time, when we are talking about yarn, these are, these are my very controversial opinions. I totally don't think that they're 100% thought out, but um, I do think there's merit in examining it and seeing maybe what comes of it. So the other thing, the aspect of that is we cannot knit a sweater or the amount of yarn that we want to buy um, as often, right? We can't knit as much as we want to buy in yarn. So what if we couldn't buy as much yarn? Maybe, maybe it gave us pause. Maybe we really thought about that yarn purchase and we didn't buy as much because it cost more and it supported small farms and um, our time, you know? I don't know. That's my Saturday morning lecture. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'm not sorry, but I'm just, I'm really passionate about this. And I actually did good, you guys. My chicken boots sales at the peak were $275,000 a year. I feel like I figured it out. And, um, but there's a lot of caveats with that amount of money. I did not make that amount of money. I made $35,000 that year. That was my salary. And there's a lot of makers who would be thrilled to make $35,000 in a year. I also paid an employee, you know, so I'm actually really proud of that amount. The reason I didn't make more than that, you guys, is because my expenses skyrocketed that year because I did a special limited edition um, subscription box. So all that extra money I made actually went to making the box. It was fun, but it wasn't profitable. It was a really great distraction and fun diversion for all for us, which if it keeps you more interested, I think that that's really important to do. It generated a lot of interest with our customers. They loved it. And I think they love that it ended after a year. So they wouldn't feel like, Oh my God, I'm missing out if I don't do it every year. So do you guys just want to sew? <laughs> this is, that was my trailer for, uh, I would really like to do a business class 
but I'm not that qualified to teach things like profit and loss and stuff like that. I'm just good at logistics and um, being hard on like what it takes. So like being strict. All right, so I've got all my things here. <laughs> You're here for sewing, I know, I'm sorry. Okay, so the first step I do, uh, these are kind of, can you see the little speckles on them? I remember this vinyl, there was something up with it. It's like little, there's like little things of, uh, uh, there's lint. It's impossible to get the lint off in the inside once I'm done. All right, so the first thing I do is I'm gonna bind the tops of these, the vinyl. This is a free pattern and people are welcome to sew and sell it. And you better be charging $18 per notions case. Otherwise, I'm, oh wait, I don't stop after one. So uh, I would have had a binding machine and I would have done this step on a binding machine and one pass would have done it and I wouldn't have had to stop like this much. It would have been a lot easier because I could have just gone da -da 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 -da, pick the other one up and, and done it. I got a little off track right there. <laughs> All right, and then we're gonna finish the binding. <laughs> this binding is a little, it's a little matchy matchy. <laughs> it's a little over the top matchy matchy. I always did a contrast. This is spoon flower fabric also, and my binding machine hated it. <laughs> And I hated using my binding machine with it, so. <laughs> Licorice talk. Uh, I broke down and I had some last night. When I went to fill up my little container from my stash of licorice, I was like, oh my gosh, I actually have eaten quite a bit. I wouldn't have cut all these zippers, by the way. I would have had uh, this. I, this is how Rayanne did it. We had a, a hose hanger like a hose like a thing like for a garden hose on the wall and we put our li our uh, licorice our zipper on the hose hanger and um we would do she would just pull it off as she sewed like this you know just kind of continually doing it and they'd all be connected um and then i would just get on her about making sure there wasn't much of a gap in between but look at this like i actually cut this zipper a little too long so it would have been better to do the hose thingy. Oh, what am I doing here? I can't believe I just did that. All right. The uh, zipper poles would not have been on it by now either. They would have come later. They would have come in the next step. So she would have just sat here and run it all the way through. And um, then she would take the long line of bound notions cases and zipper to the table and then just cut them all apart. And then she would say, I'm stand there and add all of the zipper pulls. All right, so then, and that way would have been faster. All right, now we're going to make our sandwich. So I put the, so I always liked, we changed over the years. Uh, with what fabric goes on the front of the case and what goes on the back. So I like this one on the back, the, the main fabric on the back. And I like the um, lining fabric on the front. Oh, well, there's so much lint. <laughs> uh, and that's because your tools cover up the front. That was my rationale, but we thought of it in both ways. Oh, this is, this is a stiffener. Yo, the stiffener is not so good. Oh, then we put our line, label on. Oh, uh, I feel kind of embarrassed putting this label on these. It feels really weird. I didn't want to dig out my chicken boots ones. I only tack these two spots. That's it. These are really messy because I'm not using the right size stiffener. So, just so you know. Get rid of all these pieces of lint. Oh, you'll feel them under the you'll feel them under the fabric. I'm a little out of practice here. It's obvious, huh? Okay. <laughs> it's a little, a little shorter, a little shorter uh, notions case. 
I always line up the zipper to the top because um, I would much rather trim off this edge than I don't want to trim that because I need to bind that still. Ugh, look at all that lint. Wait, do I have four knit pieces? Oh, I only cut three pearl. Bummer. Bummer. I could have made one more. So you can tell these are going to take me probably a lot longer than my previous time of like six per hour because that was like 10 minutes per. I think um, Rayanne could do like the way this is another another financial thing I, I kind of learned um, when I first had Etsy. Is this boring to you guys? I'm really sorry. I'm definitely, I hope it doesn't sound like I'm trying to toot my own horn either because I struggled every darn day having a factory and a product based business. It was so much more work than having a service oriented business, which I had had previously. Um, and I really struggled to learn. I made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> so yeah, let's talk about what everyone's working on. <laughs> Thank you, Sydney. <laughs> Yeah, I'd much, much rather do that if you guys don't want to talk about this. Oh, man. So I go around the perimeter, um, and there wouldn't normally be this much waste, but then I would even it up because there's definitely going to be some sort of like little corners there that you can smooth out. I round them because that's more natural for binding. I used to square them off, and then I would pivot. So let's do all three. We'll do them all same time. My zipper getting caught on my this little crevice here. I gently pull my binding. My machine's getting a little hung up on the vinyl, which it doesn't normally. I'm kind of surprised. I can feel it kind of uh, dragging. You see that? That was dragging a little bit. non-work fun projects. Oh, yeah, I am. I am kind of a, you know, got my new house. So yeah, right. Exactly. Well, and I, I have really strong opinions about, um, about domestic manufacturing and it is exactly why I didn't, one of the reasons I didn't sell my business to someone who asked, because I had a feeling that they were going to take the production overseas. And I'm really about um, keeping um, production here, opportunities for employment here, uh, the revenue here, everything here. I tried to source everything I could domestically. All of my findings, except for the zipper, were made in America. I paid a little bit more for that. This is a little crooked. You see that? I think I may have to fix that. Uh, uh. Um, oh, last minute Halloween costume. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm really into plants. Like I haven't been into plants in a while. Like I really like succulents. And if you ever see a picture of, you know, my porch, like there's a lot of succulents on there, but I've been kind of adding actual house plants that I've picked out, not ones I've inherited, which never do very good and ones I'm very into. So I've been kind of doing that, Sydney. And then this weekend, I'm, I vowed I'm not going to add any more plants. Um, what was the thing I was going to, I was going to see, I was going to lobby Michael for replacing the screen door on the back. That's my plan. It is very old and it wants to slam. It's one of those that just slams immediately and uh, it's kind of snappy. And it's also broken and three places. That's my, that's my hope this weekend. Oh, I didn't do too bad. 
It's a little wonky right there. Look at that. <laughs> oh, can you see that? Wait, let me show you. I don't know if you can see it with the camera. This this is the, the path. It goes like this. And then it comes whoop, like that. I like overcorrected. Don't you love that I laugh about it when I'm about to sell it? But I'll tell people when it's be photographed and, you know. These are the uh, only Notions cases, I think, in existence with this label on them. <laughs> Gotta use them up so I can get a new one next time, right? Hey, Terry, how's it going? You move some living furniture around? Ooh. I love rearranging. I actually, oh, you go, I got my, both my jelly roll quilts done. <sighs> you guys, that was so much work. Okay, the, the race thing was really cool, but that's the only fast part of that. And man, I, yeah, like that was a lot of work. The second one I did was a little faster, but I will say you guys, I gave it to my husband this week at the beginning of the week, maybe. Um, and I know, you know, so I made this really big mistake. So I measured it when I went to make the second one. I had experience struggling with the first one I made, right? Because I did two twin duvet covers. Um, and I thought, okay, this one I'm gonna make a little faster and it went tons faster. But I measured my other one and the duvet and everything. And so I wanted to make it the same size. I put a border around the jelly roll stuff too. So I accounted for that. I did all that and I trimmed off the sides, made it the proper width for the border. And I forgot to trim off of the height, the length of it. And it was this much, this much, you guys, <laughs> like fully like 15 inches probably. And I got it completely done and was putting the duvet in and realized it wasn't fitting. And I real, it took me like, like an hour and I was like, I never trimmed it off. I can't believe that. So um, I fixed that yesterday though. I was really scared to fix it because I was like, this is gonna be a rabbit hole and it's, I'm never gonna get out of this rabbit hole. And my husband said, this is the best thing he said to me. He said, if you take that, you, you have to bring it back the same day because I, I don't want to be without that anymore. He loves it. So <laughs> I was like, okay, that's motivation. I got it fixed and it was fine. But, and they're both on the bed now. So hello, so Megan, how's it going? <laughs> oh, really, Sydney? Oh, that's funny. Oh, Terry, yeah, how is the hurricane stuff? Oh, your boys? More chocolate, Ray? You know, basically, Ray, you get chocolate every time you're getting a delivery. I know you say you only got it twice, but we don't believe you. All right, so now we're doing the top. Let me wrap it around. <laughs> Oh, you still don't have internet? Wow. Wow. I don't know how, but, um, oh, I ran out of bobbin. Um, when our power is cut, we can still get internet. It has nothing to do with the power. As long as the router is connected. So, I... I clearly have more to learn about technology always, right? What's this in here? Why are you stuck like that? Okay. I could really use a little table right here. Also rugs, Sydney. I'm gonna try and figure out how to affordably add a couple of nice rugs. <laughs> panic for just panic, panic for what? <laughs> hey, quilt top's curved. Just cut that curve off. <laughs> yeah, that was uh. 
I think the consensus of, look at this, I, I can't get my throat plate off and I always clean it out. This is why you need to do that. See this tuft of, it's got to happen. Maybe I'll get it done today. I'll try. I need a different screwdriver. The one I have is just not enough purchase, you know? I think the consensus with the chat on the jelly roll race is that it's a great idea. It's fun to do, but you really take a gamble with the fabric placement. It's nice to think that no matter how you put like harmonious fabrics together, they're going to work out, but they don't always. Oh, a new serger. How fun. What'd you get? There's a lot of serger talk in here lately. All right, so this is done, except it would still need a zipper pull and a hang tag. I didn't include hang tags in that price breakdown at the beginning either. Those cost me, I think, with the twine, not the labor to put it on, but the with the twine and the hang tag, I think it was um, 32 cents. Doesn't sound like much, but it adds up, you guys. So that's that's fully 60 cents of the price when it's retail. What the heck? So uh, when you think about like how bad do I want a hang tag? But my hang tags, um, do they, they just make everything look more professional. And it was kind of like having a business card on every product. Weirdly, I don't know what it was about my hang tags, but people didn't remove them. I'm stuck on this something underneath here. My, uh, I'm, it's not going forward. Sometimes this happens. My caramba. Okay, here we go. L460. Oh, you know, I feel like, wait, it's a serger with a knee lever. Oh, you, yeah, did you get her book, Sharon? That's awesome. Whoops, I forgot to do this. Yeah, I really thought you would like that. It looked like right up your alley for um, the style of quilting you've been playing around with, like you were already on that track. I don't know a whole lot about quilting and quilting books, but I bought that in a little local shop with my friend um, Kitch Couture, who was here last week. I made uh, two dog coats using one of her patterns last winter. <laughs> her, her quilts in her book look way better than my dog coats. <laughs> Allison is not laziness. You know what? The way I look at it, because I would get suggested, suggested, um, you know what you should make um, from customers a lot, or I would really like it if you would make whatever. Um, and usually it was something that was already being made by a lot of folks. And I would just say, why? You know, there's a lot of really great makers that are doing that already. I don't need to do that. Um, and I don't need to compete against it. And they don't need to compete against me. And uh, I would refer them to like three people I knew doing it. Certainly out of practice, aren't I? You got to find your niche. It can't be too niche, but it's got to be something you can do really well, um, and and something or something you can do better. That's what I did. Something you can do better. I was really inspired by uh, Slip Stitch Studios when I started. <laughs> And we became friendly competitors. Like I definitely talked with her at shows and stuff like that. And I bought stuff from her before I made anything. I'm sure she's still around doing stuff. I don't know. Cut columns. For what? Oh, for the jelly roll? I'm all shouting, sorry. For what? All right, so we have three done. I know exactly where my machine leaves threads. <laughs> These kind of look like pajamas to me. 
That's so matchy matchy with the uh, knit binding. <laughs> it just reminds me of pajamas. <laughs> All right. So let's see. I have. One, two, three. I have another three in llamas. Uh, I think I have to iron. Oh, this is probably okay. Oh, I have to iron that. See, it doesn't account for labor like this. But the factory, if I gave them fabric with a, um, a fold in it, they wouldn't iron it. They would give it back to me with a crease in it. Isn't that great? Anybody else need ironing? I think so. Yeah, are you still turning sock tubes? Could I send you a... <laughs> I was going to ask the same thing, Tanya. I saw him post that and I was like, ooh, I want that. I don't need to knit my socks. And I can support Shadam. So that's another thing I did to save money is I bought my fabric uh, rolled on a tube so that didn't have that crease. How are they outsourcing it, Allison? Are they just, are they buying stuff from like gift shows, that kind of thing? Because I see that happen sometimes. It's like a good mix. They can have some things that look handmade, but they're very um, affordable. So they have a variety of things in their shop. Uh, so Sh Shadon has a, a, a sock knitting machine. And he, if you send him your sock yarn, I think this is how it works. Enlighten us <laughs> if I'm wrong. <laughs> Uh, he will take your sock yarn and make it into a tube, right? And then he gives it back to you and then you finish the socks. Oh, ooh, Tanya's a happy customer. Interesting. I may have to do, I think I have some yarn that is, um, it was, I think it was called California Dream and I really like that. It was like an homage to California spring. And you know, I'm California's biggest fan, so... I had to have it. How did I cut these so short? God. No one would hire me. All right. Let's see here. So if I were making anything production, I'd have my whole cart dedicated to this project. That's how you do it? Okay. Line this all up. It's not lining. It's not lined up very well. Look at this. But that's hanging off, so that's okay. I'm really, I'm really forcing these into the size that I have available. I, I can't remember what the binding looked like for the llamas. Look at how bad those were cut. Wow. I think it was a little orange, like dot or something. Uh, I used that wool mat that you, I don't know if you saw me ironing just now, but I use the wool mat and I know that that is directly marketed to quilters. So I, I, I really like it. Lens, pop some frames for us to cut. Some, oh, hi Melinda. How's it going? <laughs> Knitting is fun. Knitting is pretty, pretty amazing. 
I love it when uh, sewists turn knitters, especially if they were garment sewists, because it's a really, it's really interesting coming to knitting as a garment sewist. You have a lot of advantages because you understand fit really well. Hey Karen, how's it going? Yay, you got yourself a day of sewing knitting. That sounds nice. I see Allison. So you didn't mean like it was like a handmade like gift shop. You make glasses. That's pretty neat. Wow. Yeah, so that ironing surface sh Shadon is it's actually a wool mat made in Oregon. I don't know if they were the first to do it, but I've had it for two years and they were, they seemed like they were kind of new then. And I'm seeing them pop up by different brands now. So I don't think they're hard to find. It's a little fold in this. This isn't okay though. I'm, I'm going to get rid of that. I can fake some things, but I could actually have probably faked that. <laughs> This is one thing I learned. My style of sewing, I always got, I always got, um, wait, I thought I saw I got one on this case. I didn't. I kind of did, but I don't think you can see it. I always got a tuck right here. So you can kind of see there's a little bit of a bubble right here. So what would happen is, because my, when I'm sewing on my machine, I'm the last step, I'm sewing on this side, right? So the underside is pulling this way, and I end up getting, oh no, it's this way. Oh, that's what it is. When I put it on, when I put the binding on, it pushes it, and I get a little bit of a little pleat. And I don't notice it, and then I turn it over, and I finish it, and it solidifies it. So that's one thing I always did. Rand never did that. She was fine. <laughs> Ooh, your pants fabric. You're doing the air nights, right? Sewing is much harder. <laughs> I don't want to say that, but, um, yep. I actually would sometimes like when, when knitting designers would look for sizing help, <clears throat> I would try and help and they would dismiss me like that. They did not want to talk to me. And I, and I really, there was this kind of snobbery in some knitting circles towards sewists and i'm like why we're all trying to make stuff and i had a degree in design i'd worked in the garment industry i specialized in sizing i had all these like books that you have to pay lots of money to have with um standards they weren't really standards but and I would say, oh, you can look at these if you want. I'll photograph them. And they and they, and they would not be very polite. I'd be like, okay. I was just, you look, we're looking for help. <laughs> I know what I'm doing about this. I'm, I'm sorry I'm not like the expert knitter, but I know how to sew a little bit. Maybe because I was a bag maker and they were like, oh, you don't know how to do clothes? I don't know. I just thought it was an odd way to respond. It's like, you could at least be nice about it. Just be like, oh, that's not what I'm looking for, thanks. But <laughs> I just like to help people and I think it comes off as a know-it-all, right? Yeah, I so and I ran by everybody's suggestions to hearts. So they're, they were very excited to hear what you guys are interested in. So let us know what they're um, gonna send us next. That was kind of fun to have like three concrete things that you guys are interested in to tell them. So because of that weird little quirk of the way I sew these, I, th I try and make this top area here a little snugger than it needs to be, but I am so kind of shoehorning. I don't know why I'm back tacking. You don't need to back tack there. I'm shoehorning this stiffener and it's kind of funky. You couldn't tell. It's very funky. Look at that angle. I'm not even selling these whole full price. Probably a good thing, huh? They're kind of funky. That's why you give them to non sewists. <laughs> a basic kurta. 
Um, did you check out Folkware Patterns? I think I sent you to them, right? I feel like they have a Kurta. We can look, um, Sharon, if you want. Oh. For those of you who don't know, Sharon is a amazing potter. A ceramicist. Wait, what is, what's the proper term? Ceramicist? Potter? Potter, right? Uh, but he also knits and sews. We used to always be um, booth neighbors at shows. He's always over there giggling. He's a giggler. You can watch him uh, live too, often. Like on Twitch, right? And um, where, where are you on Facebook too? So it's kind of cool to see what you get up to. Folkware. Uh, let's look. Let us look. Oh, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. Potter. Okay. My uh, screen's magnified, if you can, couldn't tell. Would this, would this suit your knees? Yeah, YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook Live. Okay, cool. Uh, let's scroll through here. I'm going to go slow. Did I do that one already? I'm not sure why they're all shown on a white girl. <laughs> Here you go. I can't uh, zoom in. Oh, here we go. So folkware um, is a staple <clears throat> in the pattern world. It does say Mrs. and Men's. Here, maybe this. Here, I'll, I'll enlarge it some more for you. Uh, that was a little too much. I can't, I can't find the bar at the bottom. My face is covering the images. Is my face on the screen? Oh, it is. How about this? Does that work? I think that works. Wait, is that right? I see the bar there. You guys didn't tell me that you were seeing the, the bar. <laughs> All right. I can't see the chat though. What do I do with the chat? There we go. Sorry, let me scroll the chat down. Okay. So does this, um, is it, is it, um, I know it's kind of crazy. Is it, is it truly a unisex garment? Pattern printed, pattern. Hmm. Uh, let's see what else that came up. It looks like that's it. Cloud Factory has a pattern.
Oh, look at that. And someone's done some videos. Ooh. Thank you, Tanya. There you go. They're not it. Okay. What about that? All right. Well, that's probably a good start, right? You just never know what we're going to get up to around here. <laughs> How do I move this? Okay. Hi, Eliza. How's it going? I'm trying to get my screen back. <laughs> ah! Okay. Let's see. There we go. Okay. Okay. We are researching, yeah, Kurta sewing patterns. And I'm making, um, I'm making some Notions Cases production style with lots of distractions in between. Okay, cool. And it looked like there, someone had done a video, so that's nice. I really want to get the zip doubles done today. I don't have to do these. I just like want to finish out the materials. I have so many though. I probably have a hundred notions cases cut. Ran used to sew a hundred in a day. And for those of you doing the math on that for the money, remember that's retail. I like this binding with this. This binding wasn't out though when I got the, the llama fabric. Pretty sure. I got this as a single bolt just because I liked it. I used it for something though. I did turn it into binding, obviously. Alright, so now we're going to even this up. What the heck? I'll never have to even that edge up. Um, well, I, I think there's, there's equal hard things for both. I find quilting really hard and it's does, and it's, it has to fit in a different way. Like, you know, like, uh, I mean, if you're using a pattern with quilting and you're not like trying to like, you know, fly by the seat of your pants, I think that it's far more straightforward. It'd be like the equivalent of sewing a garment that you don't have to fit. <laughs> uh, sewing a garment is a million times faster than sewing a quilt. I think, I think I could pretty much say that, but I do think there's aspects to quilting that are pretty hard. Yeah. 
I think you you have you can do it though because you knit as well and you weave. Like you have some good instincts for the fiber arts. So you don't have to really worry about the skills that you'll need. You'll probably pick those up. And you can always come here and we'll help. That's we can. <laughs> I don't think I've ever sewn a Kurta. I think I actually have sewn one, but I don't remember it very well. It was a long time ago. I think it was for uh, a wedding, a man's wedding uh, shirt for his wedding. That guy passed away, sadly. Uh, come on. We almost have three more done. You know, maybe I could do more than six an hour. Maybe it was, or, yeah, maybe it was 10. Because I've almost finished six and I started at 11 and we've like surfed the net. I gave an impromptu TED talk on pricing, you know. Oh, but these were already partly sewn. Oh, I don't know. If you're into like numbers, <clears throat> this is the kind of job you like. <laughs> I like thinking about these things and figuring it out. Just remember, if the number is too good to be true, it probably is. <laughs> We'd sometimes have those happy moments where like, oh my gosh, that took us three hours less. And we'd be so excited for like a really big project. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ray has a really good point. <laughs> you seem like you're very consistent in wanting the Kurta and it would be useful to you. You know? I don't think that this is an idea that you might let go of. Just saying. But um, Ray has a really good point. Uh, I think when you're a beginner garment sewist, the learning curve is a little bit steep on what fabrics are appropriate. Yeah, Terry! Yes! That's awesome! <laughs> That's awesome! I know that feeling. You know your you know your machine. Yeah, I'm gonna have a sample sale, and I have still have some cut pieces left over from chicken boots. So I'm just finishing up a few of them. I have some zip doubles that I cut as well. Uh, let's see, one, two, one, two, three. You guys need all zip need zipper pulls. This is such a like jumble of what needs what. I, I just don't like that, you know? What's wrong with that? What is that? That's ruined. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's ruined. Okay, now we're down to four. <laughs> that was easy. So, you two are getting... Those are all okay. Oh, that one doesn't look okay. Look at that. Womp, womp. Down to three. <clears throat> see. I have two with stiffener on them, so they'll be the right size. And then that one. Yeah. Right, Melinda? Oh, that's true, Sharon. Uh, yeah. Can you have anyone send some to you? I think that um, that's a pretty specific garment. And I, I, ma I imagine people sew them non-traditionally. I just dropped a zipper pull. Um, at, but uh, you, you, might have, you might have an easier time figuring out fabric for them because you know what it's supposed to be like. You know what I mean? That might help you. Plus you got the Google. The Google's a fairly decent pal. 
at sussing stuff of, some of that stuff out. I don't know what it is about this one spoon flower fabric, but it is so grabby on the lint. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, exactly. And I think that that's a pattern that um, once you have it right, you'll be able to make multiples. So I think Ray's correct, you know, doing a muslin, which means doing like a prototype or a sample and getting it right, then you get to practice. And muslin is so affordable, you know, you can get it for a dollar a yard at a big fabric store. I have to admit, sewing these is kind of satisfying, getting this like pile. I think what happened to these, this is what I think was lost in the fire, the the, uh, the stiffener. Because Rayanne just kept, uh, she kept certain supplies on hand all the time because she always used them. And I'll bet that's where that pile went because I know we had a bunch. Unless we just made them, I don't know. But, I don't know. Oh, yeah, hand loom fat. That sounds truly lovely. Look at this one's a little drawn up. The bi My binding, I can tell this was bound on my binding machine because I had this trouble where it would, um, see it? The ripples. It's like it stretches it as it sews it on. Um, no, I would just find something affordable. The dollar yard stuff's kind of narrow. It's like 36 inches wide. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're doing pretty good, Melinda. I like I like what you've been sewing lately. I think you got it. I think you got the hang of it for sure. What did you pick for your Aronite pants? This little <laughs> miniature and it's your stiffener. Boy. Yeah, it, it doesn't have to be uh, specifically muslin. If you have an old sheet, <laughs> it can be anything. Just don't use knit. Don't use something stretchy. Use something that's a woven... Um, something that, I mean, it'd be nice if you could use the actual fabric, right? But that's a little expensive. All right. So I have one in rainbow and one in the, there's two of these. It's okay. I keep putting pins on these magnets right here. I need to stop that. I don't like my pins getting magnetized. All right. I'm going to pre-cut this so I can cut it or sew it a little straighter this time. That's the only one, right? A little gift to my future self there. The viscous linen. I love that stuff. I've made a few things out of that. Um, what did we just make out of that? The uh, the Madison cardigan. And I made the dress number one. Um, maybe I'll fit. Oh no, this one. I have two in this fabric. Um, yeah, that's great. That has nice drape and it washes really well. They're not there yet. Shadon. The Notions cases are there, though. Uh, these aren't there yet. The Notions cases, I, I have Notions cases, project bag kits, and interchangeable double cases, double interchangeable needle cases. I think those are the only shippable items I have right now. And then um, after, like, probably at the end of next week, I'm hoping I will have 
all kinds of stuff like zip doubles and um, project bags, um, some weirdos. Um, Ran and I used to have this thing called Weirdo Wednesday. It was really fun. Uh, and we would sew things. Oh, neat. Yeah, it, that was from Hearts Fabric. It was the copper. I should have finished those two. I have a bunch of stuff for sale, or I will at the sample sale. Oh, boxy bags, small sock boxes. The sock boxes, um, that's what I called them. Um, I just photographed all of all the things that I didn't already have. Uh, what, what else do I have? I have three pattern holders. Someone's already asking about those. I have two, one that's kind of wonky. <laughs> It works. It's wonky. Um, and then two that are were prototypes to be a landscape version and also for folks that um, print on larger paper. Larger than the United States. I'm getting AO and A4 confused right now, so I don't want to say which one. But um, I only have three of those. One pumpkin pouch. Um, geez, what am I? I can't think of uh, everything. Just some, like a few prototypes that were like when we would do, say, a holiday group and we were trying to come up with a design, we would do the prototypes. So I have a couple of those in there. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Shadon. Um, probably, I'm hoping next end of next week. Sorry, it's kind of casual. What are you looking for? Are you looking for some of these? This is a free pattern. You just got to be on my newsletter list. And you get it in the welcome email. I'm going to change that because I know folks are like, I lost that welcome email. <laughs> got to download patterns right when you get them, right? <laughs> oh. Wow. Scotland's done so good, too. Oh, I need to change my chat to say to be live chat, not top chat. And everyone's colors are going to change. Another aspect of garments is taking into account the variety of help by needles. Yeah. Yeah, and I think like, I think I used to erroneously say, you don't need a whole lot of tools in garment sewing. There's a ton of tools to buy out there, but I think like, I use more tools than I realize. So I need to revise saying that. But I absolutely only use these when I'm sewing, you know. But, you know, when we're doing other things, I definitely, you know, use more things. And you don't have to. There's ways to not use them. I can see why I didn't. Do you, can you guys see why this never got sewn? Anyone? It's so obvious to me right now. <laughs> You like the knit stitch nosen's pouch? I can hold one for you, shirt on. I would do that for you. Anyone? <laughs> I see why that one never got so, but then I just didn't have the heart to like throw the fabric away. <sighs> oh, I'm missing the garbage can. Look at my little <laughs> Look at my cut my my slice. <laughs> Bottom right corner. The little type. No, it's that the uh, unicorns aren't very centered. So when I would have them cut things, 
It was always a, a dice roll on if they would. Yeah, Kika gets it. Yeah. So, you know, it's up there. It was on the fabric, but, you know, I would say you have to cut it below this line. It was marked on the pattern, but, you know. They were like, uh-huh. <laughs> sure. I never talked much about being a woman as a business owner because I feel like it's just something a lot of people do not want to hear about it, but it is a struggle sometimes when you're dealing with others, men, I hate to say it. I really hate to say it cause I wish it wasn't true, but that was one working at that working at that factory was kind of hard sometimes it would be better if i pretended like i was figuring things out while we were talking like oh maybe it was this and then they'd be like oh yeah but if i just right off the bat was like oh that's because of blah 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 they'd be like no 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 <laughs> anyway yeah, right, Elizabeth? Me too. I feel the same way about knitting. So I think like what Ray said about what like what can help you or hurt you, like the proper needle on your machine and stuff like that. I think Shadon will take to that pretty easily because he's a knitter and a weaver and a potter. He knows. He knows tools. Um, and I think anyone, you know, like, like knows like, okay, that is a helpful tool that I, that would really escalate the quality of my sewing. That tool would be just kind of fun and nice to have. And um, like knowing those differences, you know, where to spend your money. It's sometimes tough though. Case in point, the loop tuner, turner package I have sitting down here that I've tried twice using and cannot for the life of me get to work. But then I see black women stitch post this whole little she can just do it right right away i'm like what the heck how does she do that just i just don't can't figure it out i should have put it in one of the giveaway packages this summer so one of you could use it because i can't figure it out you know what else i can't figure out you guys this is like this is I am terrible at sewing underwear. Don't ever let me do that again, okay? Just don't ever let me do it again. I put those feather, that feather pair on the other day that we made with the Alcott dress for fun. They actually fit really good and they're, they're actually, even though they were super funky, cause they were, they were, I did not sew those very good. I was wearing them and there's a hole in them. <laughs> like what the heck? I did not see this hole. I don't know. I used to be so good at sewing knits, but I do not think that anymore. I don't know what happened. I lost that skill. I don't use it enough. Case in point, those Hudson's, I shouldn't have used that chain stitch on the waistband. You know, live and learn. This binding is actually kind of cute on this rainbow print. I like it. It goes really good with the, um, it's the same, it's both, they're both cotton and steel, but it's a neon pink. Probably doesn't look neon on the screen. What is this little dip right here? Oh, there's a seam on the binding right there. Right, Ray? I know everyone gets that. Hello, Nancy. <laughs> Okay, Sydney. Have a good weekend. Enjoy your family. That's kind of nice. What a treat. I Maybe they'll watch the kiddos and you can get back to your crafts. I didn't even get to ask you what you were doing non-sewing related. I figure you might have something in mind when you ask me. <laughs> anyway, bye. <laughs> See you, Sharon. Good luck. I need to check out the sock thing. I'm going to go look through my sock yarn. 
I don't really enjoy wearing hand knit socks uh, because I wear clogs. They're just a little stiff for that. But I'd like to kind of break my clog addiction too. So there's a problem right there. This is something, uh, anytime I'm teaching someone how to sew these, I always watch for this. So when I first tacked it, my tack is a little close and see there it is. I'll have to remove that and that's kind of a pain to remove. All right, what is this? Oh, that's from the binding, okay, that's fine. All right, that's a nice front and center unicorn. <laughs> no, I'm not sewing any more on these. Okay, so we made all these. Hour and a half plus chit chat, I guess. It's nice to have that. I was like, oh, nine notifications is not that much, but. Okay. Oh, there's that, okay. Actually, I've, uh, I couldn't find, um, I couldn't find this binding. I knew I, I had it out and I couldn't figure out where it was and it was back here. So um, I have a couple more um, notions cases I can sew later if I end up getting it. Is, the, is it kind of blurry? It's not, right? It's just an optical illusion. Okay. All right, so now I'm switching to zip doubles. Okay, I had to recut this, the lining for this. So let's get this caught up. Um, if you own this pattern, I sell this, this is one of my patterns, they both are, but I sold this one. If you, if you um, have this pattern, I'm sewing it differently because I um, only have the zipper that's half the zipper. This was a lot faster. I highly recommend doing it this way. It's a lot faster and easier. The pattern pieces are kind of a pain though because they, um, they're kind of a weird shape when they're double the size. <laughs> What's going on here? Here we go. Ray, Andy's bribe. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever get a uh, message with the undies bribe in it. <laughs> I need to just work on my undies skills, I think, because they just weren't, they're just not that great. Thank you. <laughs> undies bribe, oh man. You really should bribe me not to sew them anymore. Okay, this is... Look at this. <sighs> three different... Three different lengths. You want to <laughs> bribe too? You guys are crazy. I don't think I really did a good job on those. Hello, Kay Williams. I use 12 gauge. That can vary though. Um, I What I like to say is find something, uh, since it's so affordable, if you're buying it retail, are you buying it retail? Because you're limited, right? If you're buying it wholesale, it comes in a, in a mind blowing variety. Um, so the, um, if you're buying a full uh, retail, I say buy the heaviest gauge you can find because 12 is probably the max you'll find unless you're looking at like upholstery places and then you're kind of getting overkill. You don't really need it that strong. Um, and I look for something that's supple and soft, but still firm because you um, want it to last. Oh, Tanya, you're nice. 
Oops. Um, so I like matte or non-glare. It doesn't stick to itself. This is matte right here. It looks kind of shiny, but it's not. That's the back side. This is the front side. This is the original stuff I used to use. It's the best. But they were really terrible to me, so I stopped using them. And um, what else can I say? Uh, I used to buy Joanne Fabrics. I don't know what you want to know. <laughs> this has been sitting rolled up. You can see all these little creases in it. But once it warms up, it'll be fine. This was cut a long time ago. I'm not sure my top's going to work quite yet, so I'm going to check it because <laughs> it was a little bit different lengths. You never know when these things were cut, you know? All right. I already bound these the other day when we were sewing. So these are all, oh no, I didn't. These were already made, I think. That's why I want to finish these. I made, I cut these for the demo. Try not to get the bubble. If you buy any of my patterns, like if that you're asking because you have this pattern, the information is there. I try and, I'm really honest about where the vinyl comes from. It's no big deal to me. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> There's links too in the description. That's nice of you. Ray. All right, so let's see how my uh how this is going to line up. I can just check it while it's still open here. What I would really like is it to line up like this, but I don't think it will. So we're just going to adjust it. Oh yeah, it will. Cool. All right, we're going to get rid of this. All right, now I'm going to understitch it. When I was getting stuff ready for the sample sale, I actually went through all my my vendor stuff and um, was getting rid of like sample cards. Tanya, oh my gosh, you guys. This isn't really for undies, is it? Thank you. That's really nice of you. <laughs> oh my gosh. I really don't think I did very good with the, the undies. I don't know. I see other people's pictures and I'm like, oh, that looks so good. I'm more than just a bag maker, but still, <laughs> I'm not an undies maker. It worked. It worked. We got the whole. Here, do you want to see Tanya? <laughs> you missed the alert. Woo woo. You're falling prey to Ray's evil plan, Tanya. Yes, undies. All right. I'm going to work on my skills because when I saw that this morning, the whole in them, I was like, I am never, so this is what you don't want to happen. When you're turning your vinyl, you don't want to get a little, little crease in it. Oh, sorry, I can't really see right there. It looks like that happened before I did that though. Um, I was like, I am never gonna sew these again. I'm, I just need to leave these to other people that have the right machines and have spent more time working on this. Um, this is not my wheelhouse, but then the other side of me was like, okay, you can still leave it to other people to do this, but you still need to work on these skills because they're going to benefit you for other things. That was my little pep talk before coffee this morning. It was too much before coffee, but I do not believe I need to be good at everything. Oh, here it is. <laughs> that was awesome, Ray. I know that was fun. I sent the mask to them with their package. Uh, 
I, you know, it's interesting because the mask I made to go with my sagebrush dress with the in the plaid linen, that is my favorite mask now. It is, uh, I'm going to make all my masks out of linen now. It's easy to breathe through. It's comfortable on my face. And um, there's something about the way it fits. Hello, pretty wings. Oh, nice. Oh, are you making the Sorrento? That is a really fun pattern to sew. Don't work on it on stream. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what I think, too. I think I'm going to... Well, I worked on it at home, and I don't know. My machine is made... My home machine is made for quilting. That's all I'll say. Like, that's all I really need to say, right? So... Yeah, I love making that Sorrento bucket hat. It's really funny that you say that because when I'm driving to work, when I get off the freeway here, there is this, um, like, a complex of housing. Like, it's not apartments. Maybe it's condominiums. I'm, I'm, it's, like, over here. That's why I'm looking this way. But the name of it, it's, like, this wall. It's very Tuscan-inspired, and it says Sorrento in big letters and I thought I should have taken pictures of the hats in front of that. It didn't even occur to me till today. Where's Sorrento at? Is it Italian? I don't even know. Um, the uh, There's a really huge workout place, like a gym, down in between the Sorrento complex and my place. and. They, uh, it's, it's a Tuscan inspired, um, gym. It's five acres. Dude. <laughs> you made your own pattern. Oh, nice. But the sewing's the same. So that works. That's a free pattern too. You can up the sizing on that free pattern really easily. My husband has a tiny noggin. Well, it's, it's not that it's different, Elizabeth, except for the fact that um, the stitches that they put on there aren't going to be catered to home sewing. So I have a buttonhole stitch, and it's actually a pretty good one. Uh, but I don't have, like, stretch stitches and things like that. I might have a couple, but I don't have the ones I see people use. So You know what I mean? So they have, uh, all like, all the feet I have are... Uh, geared towards quilting like um, the way they mark things on the feet and everything so that's that's why I say that it's not like a quilting machine as far as people go to when they quilt their quilt it's not like that it it's just a um yeah it's got all the stitches and stuff you know what I mean you know what I mean yeah yeah okay let's finish sewing this top here I didn't even finish it. I'm doing things a little out of order. Uh, I need the zipper pull. <laughs> now or never. If I could get the world using zipper by the yard, that would be one of the things I would like to lay my claim to fame to. Actually, no, I take that completely back. If I could get the whole sewing world on cutting fabric on the grain, that would be the legacy I would like to leave behind. You're like, not this again. that was this fabric is so lightweight going through the zipper sometimes it gets a little funny there I'm gonna cut back that thickness there so when I do this a nice pops nice and up, up easier to do it from like this side okay all right let's see if it actually does line up because I'm suspicious for sure. Yes, Nancy is my my first um <laughs> she's signing the petition. 
That's awesome, Ray. Mine's a little snug. I think I need to make the next size up or just use a smaller seam allowance next time. I don't have a small head, you know? Anyone see the handle? It was here. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> I read hat. She's agreeing with my, I hope she's agreeing with my, my, um, crusade to get people to cut on green at fabric stores. This handle seems kind of long. I'm going to shorten it up a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Here's the test. Does it actually fit? This handle seems so long. Oh, it's okay. Never mind. Seems okay. All right. All right. I, that one I did the other day, though, was twisting so bad. Let's get this to not twist this time. I have to remember to put that in the description that it's a little wonky when it's laying flat. When you're out of practice sewing your own designs. Ugh. You know? Okay, so where does this end up, though? This ends up... This is the center right here. Okay, just making sure. Mm. Mm. Um, I I have never had no. <laughs> if they don't already, Tanya, the problem if they don't already is that you might end up shorting yourself on the other end because they would have to true up the bolt then measure your fabric and you'd be fine. But if they didn't true up the bolt first, you could end up shorting yourself depending on how, what direction it's off. You know? And I've never known a fabric store to be like, sure, you know? The only fabric store I know that does it is Fabric Temptations in Arcata, California. <laughs> But I know that there are others out there because people have said in the chat, oh yeah, my fabric store does that. Never at a big box store would they do that. I'm like trying to do too many things at once right now. I just need to do one thing here. I'm trying to get these edges to line up and I'm wondering why. It could be my poor cutting because I was kind of cutting that, that under fabric out a little quickly. I want to go by the soot sprites instead. I don't want to get any torquing. Yeah. We are being ripped off. Yeah, I know. I totally agree. Plus, it's a not a nice cut of fabric. I feel old-fashioned for saying this, but I've actually been on this crusade since I was 26 years old. So, I've seen the difference it makes. Say you wanted to, you're like, uh, I need a quick, um... Yeah, they're exactly dar. I did. I worked at House Fabrics. There's no way they would have allowed that, because um, people would ask for it. But um, say you wanted a quick table runner, or m more appropriately, a quick tablecloth. You're like, oh, I'm gonna get a beautiful piece of fabric, and all I'm gonna do is hem the ends. I'm not even gonna like hem the selvage, because you're in a hurry. You're having a really nice. 
whatever, dinner party, what are those, <laughs> you know? And so then you get it, you get it cut and you're like, uh, why is it hanging diagonally across my table? Why is the ends hanging like this, you know? And it's because, well, it was because it was cut that way. No, Ray, just the end, just the cut edge that you're starting with. So when we did it, we would cut off. So this is what we would do. So this is the thing. It does not, um, it does not short anybody fabric, but the consumer. So if, when the shop gets their bolt in, this is what we would do. We would cut the end of it off to straighten out that edge. And generally what it would look like is a piece of fabric just like this, but longer because it would be the whole end. It would be a taper and then uh, like a little bite, but it would always be about this size, except it'd be 44 inches wide, whatever the bolt width was. And, and then it would be ready. And we would still measure on the fold because it wouldn't matter. The fold and the selvages were all the same length. So, yeah, but that straight track doesn't cut on grain. And yeah, you're right. They don't even cut straight now, let alone on grain. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have that track. We didn't need that. We could hear it and feel it in our scissors. Anyway, I've kind of, I kind of derailed you guys into my little crusade. <laughs> but it is, it is really important. It does save you. And it's funny because I blame quilters. <laughs> I blame the quilters. They should have been fighting for this. They they get the most benefit out of it because they have to buy so much extra fabric sometimes to make their thing work. But quilters don't pre-wash now either a lot of times, so they're not really noticing it like they were. I love you quilters. Don't take it don't take it wrong. That's a weird expression. Don't take it wrong. Don't think I don't love you. <laughs> okay. This vinyl's a little stiffer than the other. They're both 12 gauge, but this one's heavier. This is why I say, yeah, like when you get into the worlds of vinyls, oof, man, it is a world. I was looking through those, um, oh, this needs to be trimmed right here. Dang it. This needs to be trimmed. Uh, I was looking through all those sample cards I had from vendors and some of them, like when I was looking for certain things and what, not finding it, you know, they have the little letter that comes with the card and I was reading, I kept some of them because I want to make sure I don't ask the same person for something twice if I get, because their names are like so generic, you know, they're like, uh, LPC Industrial Corporation, you know, when you're looking for some of these materials. And um, I would forget who I talked to, so I would save the letters, but I was looking through some of them, and most of the time they were pretty nice, but some of them I was like, gosh, do you know, they, why don't they, why aren't they helpful? Anyway. I w looked for years for a PVC free vinyl. I know my customers didn't believe me, but I really was looking and uh, it exists. It exists because there's food grade plastics out there. Like if you're at kind of one of those groovier grocery stores, you'll see um, some of the stuff in like the kids lunchbox section where they have really cute little um, um, pouches and things and they're clear like a vinyl, but they're food grade. And those are PVC free. But I could never find a wholesale price for, for a wholesale outlet for those. Oh, that went really good. Soot sprites, if you know, you know. All right, next. Next, maybe I should have done a, uh, I finished this binding off. I'm getting so low. Yeah, 
That's true, Nancy. But I feel like it goes the other way. Hey, Karen. Or bye, Karen. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Have a good weekend. Yeah, I think um, I'm kind of annoying in that I'm always like, is there a better way to do this? Uh, sometimes it's, that's a useful uh, way to approach things. And sometimes it's like, you know, you can kind of overthink and over-engineer things. There's definitely like, just like sometimes the way things were, you know, and that it just works. It's like how uh, we use this broken seam ripper to feed the binding into the binding machine. And we it was the perfect little tool. It was just like one of those blue seam rippers, you know, the one, like the standard, like kind of blocky rectangular one. And uh, the tip had broken off. And there was something about the way that tip worked, you know. Could we have probably gotten a fancy tool or something? Probably, but that just worked. Yeah, isn't this cute? I bought this for my mom. I made I made her something out of it. Didn't we do this last year together? Wait, I went to that quilt show. And I bought it there. I got the blue background and the white background. And I ended up making my mom... You guys might remember more than I do. I have to say, this is one of my least favorite bindings, though. There's something about it I do not, I really love and I really don't like. Uh, but I know the color goes pretty good with this. Look at, it brings out this cute little guy. <laughs> it's good to kind of go through sometimes your fabrics and just get it out of your system, use it on something. What did I make her? I made her uh, oven mitt. Oh, you guys, we need to talk about what kind of gift sewing would you guys like to do this year? We need to start planning that. It's November next week. So anyone who would like to sew gifts, uh, I, I'm always looking for patterns that are free so that we're not adding to everybody's expenses. Or, you know, affordable. Nice, Ray. <laughs> um, I mean, I like I like supporting people for patterns. Don't get me wrong. I think last year we had two that were for sale and two that I gave for free. Right? Is that what it was? Oh, I need to iron this. Um, I need to iron this pocket too. So last year I gave you guys an oven mitt pattern. Oh yeah, the guy a little. This isn't a parakeet either. Uh, we did the oven mitts, the dish carrier, the boxy bag, the apron that was sponsored by Hearts. What else? The wallet? Wallet. That was, so the, the boxy bag, dish carrier, oven mitt, uh, and the uh, wallet, those were patterns I gave you guys, either as Patreon or for free. Um, and that's what we did for gifts last year. I wouldn't mind doing more wallets again. You're fine, Nancy. We got you. We understand. Uh, so if you guys want to start coming up with some ideas, like things you would like to sew for gifts, um, and we can start kind of working on what we'll need for that. I did like a week of sewing gifts with you guys, and it was really fun. And then I'm thinking we're going to schedule a finally finished objects week that Walter always inspires us on. So that you have that week to sew those things or things by the end of the year. We're going to have a like push to get our things done by the end of the year, right? There's a cut in this fabric. I'm going to work around it. It's 
kind of a bummer because this one's going to be the long one and I would like it to be long at the other end. So do I take a risk here? <laughs> I kind of wanted to do dog beds for everybody in my life, but I realized that that's actually kind of not feasible because I can't mail dog beds stuffed, you know? <laughs> so maybe not dog beds. I was going to do the floor poofs. But I do love making that, that floor poof. Come on, get in there. That's fine, Melinda. I think that's nice. I can see that there's been a few people making napkins. I think that's also a nice gift. The thing is, making napkins as a present, if you want to do a fabric that's actually really great for napkins, it's kind of expensive, you know? An apron pattern with a full bust adjustment. Ooh. Huh. You know, um, that one we made for Decades of Style actually fit me really good. The only thing I would have needed to change is the, because it had, it's one of those where you go like this, you know, so it has like the, the two, like two or three inch wide uh, collar around. Hi, Luna. Happy Halloween. <laughs> oh no, really, Nancy? Um, but I do think that that pattern allows for a curvy physique and a not so curvy one. But I might be wrong. I don't know. I don't. I don't remember if we um, kind of if we looked at it that way. I'm trying to remember. Oh, it was the one yard by. Oh, you know why? Because it's on the bias, Tanya. Wait, who said that? Yeah, Tanya did. Uh, it's on the bias, so I think it does allow for that. It's reversible, too. But like I said, the only thing I found, found it did is like when the thing was around my neck, the, the top of the apron was around my neck, it kind of did this. You know, it did the little flare. So I think uh, if you wanted to slash and spread it a little, or not spread it, overlap it to get rid of some of it. Yeah, right, Ray? I would love an apron, but I never put an apron on. I just made a boo-boo right here. Gotta fix that. Yeah, I would actually like to wear one at work, too, to pr protect my clothes and not have to take off so many threads. I arrive somewhere and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm covered in threads. I'm going to try and make a little pet quilt for the bottom of my bed to match my jelly roll quilt. But I don't think I'm going to make it from that fabric. I'll just use a little bit of it. I don't really have enough to do the whole thing. Alright, so now I have this. Uh, I hadn't finished this yet quite yet. Oh, I got to put the zipper on. Why do I keep forgetting that? This was definitely not ever when I did production. Maybe a couple times. Oh, yeah. You might check Decades of Style. 
she has a lot of um, uh, aprons that are like constructed, not just a flat piece of fabric. I don't know if she has a lot of aprons. I shouldn't say that. We could we could surf for sight. We've been doing that a lot lately. What if you modify, do you have a pattern in your library that has princess seams that would make a good apron? It's a thought. I'm gonna notch this. I don't, wasn't very good about notching my, uh, oh, I did notch it, okay. Okay, I take that back. You know, I'm pretty sure she put this handle on before she did that. Because I forget it's at this end. You don't actually need to have a zipper. But you do need to do it through both layers. Hmm, I can't remember now. <laughs> right, Tanya? I think that could be. Wow, Nancy. Rude. <laughs> See, I I have trained my pets to only lay on quilts. They left they lay on the couch too, but um the well, you know, Cashmerette actually has the Lennox shirt dress princess seams. That's exactly what popped into my head when you said that. Oof, I didn't stretch that enough. Yeah, so if I put a little, uh, if I put anything on the ground, like a towel or a quilt, uh, whoever's closest will just immediately walk onto it, even if they just sit there and stare at me. But I do notice that they have a preference. And I would like to keep them off the top of my bed. I want them to lay down at the bottom. <laughs> Cooking shoes? What does that mean? I mean, I have gardening shoes. Which, fine, I have had my gardening shoes since before Cricket was born. And um, they finally, they finally cracked. I think I just ran out of thread. Yep, look at that. Wow, look at that. Perfect, perfect. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, I had not thought of that either. What I want right now is a portable, dang, a portable fence because two dogs and one cat for some reason have taken to sitting on the the gushy mat that you stand on to wash dishes or stand at the oven. And that's really annoying. The black cat I can't see, so sometimes I'll walk in the kitchen and walk right on top of him. Oh, hmm. Crisscross apron pad. Hmm kind of want to do a search for um, princess seam apron, you know? Yeah, Ray, I meant to tell you, you had asked me when uh, I did the Alcott, because uh, you were like, wait, did you buy that when they were having their sale? And I had, that was a hearts, a hearts project. I bought this, you and I bought this, I think the same patterns from that sale. 
I bought the Lennox, the Ames, and the one that's like a combo, the, sh I don't know why, I'm not actually that thrilled with that one. It's uh, uh, the top and the skirt are different fabrics from each other. I don't remember the name of that. It's like a, in the picture, it's a striped and then the, then the navy blue and it's a dress. It looks like a two piece, uh, two pieces, but it's one. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that'll probably make it more like the, the kitchen's probably not like the right height for you. Oh yeah, I need to do the bottom. Threads out of there. Yeah, I want to make that uh, go bag capsule wardrobe, which I know none of you will really care about care about the fact that it's like for that purpose. But I think the clothes I want to pick will be kind of interesting because I want things that don't wrinkle. Um, and I'm, I'm worried that a lot of them is going to take knits. Lennox, thank you. That's it. No. The Ames, Lennox. Oh, you did buy the Alcott. See, and I didn't buy the Alcott. So I bought the Ames and the Lennox, but the uh, other one I can't remember the name of. Um, I have this knit top that I designed, I like designed for my mom and I, and we have, we both have shirts made out of it. That was pretty easy to sew too. But that's not a pattern I can point you guys to. We wanted it, so we made it. <laughs> and then I want some pants, but I want them to be button fly, not pull on, but still casual and comfortable. Don't we all want that? Yeah. And, um,. They, it also needs to be multi-season. I just want to do like two pairs of bottoms. Oh, I didn't have enough thread when I did that. Two pairs of bottoms and maybe three tops. Because, you know, I can theoretically wash my clothes. I don't know. They can't be too cute so that because I don't want them in my go bag. It needs to be affordable too. Like I'm basically making a, like a small little wardrobe, you know. It's kind of decadent, but at the same time, I just want to do it because I am frustrated by the fact that I have to have a go bag, you know, and I feel like that will it kind of gives me some sort of fun aspect to it. Oh, cool, right? Yeah. I, uh, I think I would actually make that Alcott in my go bag. That dress was so comfortable. I really want to think, start thinking about that. I only need to go back through like, theoretically through December, like September through December. <laughs> right, Ray? I finally moved into my suitcase and not my go bag because that was the other thing. I was like, I do not like this bag. It was nice for my parents to get us them. They were like, this is your go bag. You know, they got those for us. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, you know what? There's a pandemic. I'm just going to use my suitcase, which is actually really nice. So, uh, that was kind of a big thing. And Michael was like, yeah, me too. My husband has not been home this long ever in my, the whole time I have been with him ever. He travels for work. 
So he's not using any of his stuff right now. Did I get it? Did I do the center on this? I yeah, I did. Okay, that's fine. About you. How wonky are you? These are all just a tiny bit off. It makes me think that when these were cut, they weren't notched very well. Are you guys bored of this? Is that it right there? That's it. Okay. I only have one more zip double. If you're bored, you don't have to watch, honestly. My two layers aren't really lining up very well. Let's check. My seam pointing this way. Yeah, so one's a little shallower. You guys have any fun Halloween plans? Yeah, and I would do uh, masks to match. I don't know about undies. The last thing I want is stuff that makes me mad when I wear it if I'm evacuated. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, thanks, Jill. Okay, cool. Actually, you know who made me feel really good about streaming this kind of thing is Louise. Um, who's, I don't think she's here today, but she said, you know, I you, you, she just said something really nice to me one day about this kind of sewing. And so I was like, yeah, she's right. I actually really like this kind of sewing. Um, not production sewing is not production. Anything is just, it's just not for everybody. My mom hates production stuff. She always had me help her do like if she was doing a lot of something, oh wait, is this too big? <gasps> Are they really? Oh my gosh, Melinda, I can't wait for you to play Hugh. I, I don't know how you do it on a, on a computer, but with the controller, how you play that game is really interesting. I love production sewing though. Sometimes when I'm kind of tired and I get here and I'm like, what am I gonna do? That's the best thing I could be doing. What is the most productive thing I could be doing? I, I'm like, just I just wanna production sew. And I'm like, you don't production sew anymore. Come on, lady. All right, yeah, I'm easing this in. It, it was a little too big. <laughs> right, right? That is a very happy thought. I have been putting effort into kind of like, just kind of looking around at machines. <laughs> we are, I end up just, like since Cricut's not really into like carving pumpkins, the last few years I bought, I just bought baking pumpkins and put them out for a little bit. But we also heavily, oh, these are really bad. Um, really heavily uh, decorated, so people knew. I'm so functional. I'm like, okay, I'll get a pumpkin if we can eat it. <laughs> and I would usually make this pumpkin soup. It's like this spicy pumpkin soup with um, a lime leaf in it and coconut milk. It's really good. The Thai pumpkin soup. You know, I'm, I, uh, kind of modified these tops. That's why they're not all fitting that well. Yeah. I think people are, they are. <laughs> I like seeing the viewer account up there. I totally appreciate folks that um, just stop in even if they're not chatting because I do that too. It's hard to just sit there and not do something, you know? This is the worst step on the 
zip double in my opinion because you can't do it i don't do it from the inside of the bag it doesn't matter whether you did it on the from the inside you would have had to do the first step on the outside so you can't get away from it um and it is a little awkward if you have a free arm that's kind of nice because it could go around the bed of your machine but one time a free arm would actually be very helpful you could turn the bag inside out but i I've never done that in the vinyl. I don't I don't recommend turning it inside out often. <clears throat> I saw these two huge raccoons this morning. I've never seen raccoons where we live. I know they're there, but um, I hadn't seen them and I thought it was weird that they were out in the morning. And both of our bullfrogs are back. And roast the pumpkin seeds. Some pumpkin seeds don't taste that great. Wow. Oh, wow, right? That's cool. Yeah, I love roasted seeds like that. But some I'm always disappointed. I'm like, why don't these taste very good? Well, that's the first time I've ever done that. It was so cute there for a minute, wasn't it? That was the sewing fairy telling me, lady, you're sewing this wrong. That's why I was trying to ease it in there. My carumba. My carumba. If I had bound, well, I never would have bound the stuff on the binding machine, but. Oh, man. Such a bummer. I've never done that. I have definitely made mistakes on this bag, but it's usually the same mistake. Not this one. Never done this one. Never done that. I wish I could just rip the binding off. I can on the next one probably. Yeah, it's inside out. The top is inside out. Garlic and uh, paprika. Ooh, that sounds really good. The doubles and gave nice gifts. Really? That's cool, Tanya. That's a nice gift. Like, that's a lot of sewing for a gift. <laughs> that's what I mean. Um, you know, when I was a, a kid, Pretty Wings, um, my mom and grandma would use um, Lowry's seasoning salt on them. Remember that? That orange seasoning salt? God, there's probably MSG and it was probably terrible. But it tasted really good. Or there was this other one, Jane's Crazy Mixed Up Salt. That was the other one. Now I would probably use like Spike olive oil maybe. Where's the end? Okay, there's the end. Yeah, that sounds good. We have some paprika that friends brought us um, from their travels. And it's so good. It's smoked, smoked paprika. All right, I could rip the vinyl by doing this, but we're kind of at that point, <laughs> right? We're kind of at that point. All right. Poor little traumatized bag. Wait a minute, what about the traumatized so is? No, we're fine, we're fine. Everything's fine. Ripped right there. Lowry's, yes. Lowry, yeah, that's what it was, Lowry's, Lowry's. 
<laughs> oh, there's special knitting friends. That's nice. I feel honored now that you used that this pattern for that. Okay, so this is one and this is the other. I'm gonna probably make it a little smaller. You know, why not? We can do that. Make it fit a little bit better. You can even just make it smaller at the end that it's not fitting. So right here, I'll go up to a point at the top and then pivot back out. That way the opening didn't get smaller. Just the air, the seam going to the bag. Okay, so this is how it goes in there. And we're gonna trim the top down a tiny bit. It was already a little too tall because the pocket wasn't flush, so. Now we can get rid of a little bit of this messiness and put it into the top. Reset. Yeah, sometimes garlic powder works better for something like that. I'm not a big garlic fan. I know that's kind of like, I love the taste of it, but I think, um, my body doesn't like it because I will taste it for days and I worry that like I, I only smell like it or something, you know, and my husband's like, no, you don't, or, but sometimes I do probably. <laughs> All right, let's not do that again. Wrong side to the bag or the lining side. When I make a mistake like that, it makes me doubt everything. Then I'm like, is that really how I do it though? Because that's what I thought I did the first time. And that's not what I did. i to get some of this ragged edge trimmed too. dragging a little on the vinyl. I'm kind of surprised. You know? You grow it? Yeah. That's nice, though. Do you do the garlic braids and dry them? Alright. So what are you guys doing this weekend? Are you guys, like, you haven't said much about your Halloween plans. Maybe there aren't any, but what are you guys sewing right now? Oh, and um, Penny gave us the time stamps. Okay, bye, Melinda. Nice seeing you. <laughs> um, Penny gave us the time stamps for the Fairfield button-up, so those are now live. If anyone wants to make the men's Fairfield button-up. Um, that might be the extra push because you can like skip around to the timestamps, which is really nice. So thanks to Penny for doing that. Yeah, right, right, exactly. Okay. Let's trim this edge back up. Get rid of all that rest of that that I ripped off. Make it nice and clean in there. I start doubting everything now. <laughs> oh, okay. Did 
Do you know what the point of the braids are? Is it just a nice way to store them so they're pretty? my uh the one costume that I have made um I still have not it I shouldn't say it that way I've actually made a lot of them but hey Beverly oh nice you're making the grand bill someone was just asking about that oh he's into the hat then he's like okay now I want some camo <laughs> nice Oh, Ray, wow, that was fast. So the pressure's on. <laughs> Someone uh, who, are, the Lisa, who did the first one, the Archer, she was like, oh, if you want any other recent video, let me know. And I was like, okay, that's nice of her. So I kind of looked at the videos. I'm kind of surprised. I feel like when I look at the videos I've done, I haven't really sewn a whole lot of garments the last half of this year. The Madison and the Alcott are kind of the only ones, right? What else? Let's see. Hudson's. Sagebrush. And then nothing until the Fairfield in July. That's kind of crazy. Three part back. What do you mean three parts? Is it princess seams? That's the one I kept th saying was a camp shirt. And it's not, is it? All right, I'm done, aren't I? This is done, right? Okay. I feel like the Granville's come up so many times that maybe I should look at that. Maybe that would be good for my go bag. Okay, salvaged. That looks pretty cute. Pop the zipper. It really makes this little bird stand out, doesn't it? <laughs> so, so cute. All right. I'm getting tired, but I'm pressing on. I need, this is it. This is all I have left. Not really, but it's <laughs> all I'm going to do. I'm going to do um, one more. And then maybe a couple of Notions cases, because I'm going to switch my thread color. To, where is it? Oh, yeah. Two, one, two. I'm gonna make two. Hard as for us northerners. Meaning it grows better? Nine. I honestly just don't remember the length for the handle. Okay, here's my binding. I just need black thread. Okay, yeah so it has the yolk I kind of figured that's what you meant by the three parts and then like um, princess seams basically instead of darts right and then it does it what kind of collar is it a what I call a convertible collar so it's it got it has a turned down collar but without the stand right that's the Granville just google it See Granville. Oh. Oh, that's not a 
camp shirt at all. Yeah, that shaping is great. Well, that's so holic. Okay. Ooh, look at that Liberty of London. Hmm. That's a really cute shirt. So I have modified my um, Archer to fit me. But if I hadn't done that, I would totally have done that one. That's a really good option. You know, I don't need this. So what's the one, do you know what, I, what I'm thinking of Beverly where someone said the, it's like a camp shirt? Do I have a black bobbin? Please say I do, oh, I do, okay. <laughs> do you guys know what I mean? It's like, like more like a Hawaiian shirt style. So it's a little boxier, but I know someone designed a pattern that's uh, got more of a, uh, for lack of a better word, a feminine silhouette. Yeah. Oh, Granville. Oh, cool. You live in Canada, Beverly? The Gilbert by Helen's Closet. Oh, really? The Gilbert. Someone else said that. Oh. Oh, right. This is new. Okay. You guys want to see? Yeah, it's cute. I I don't know why, but I'm not a fan of this kind of collar. But actually, this is really cute. Is it, can you wear it without the, um, it being tied at the bottom? Hmm. Oh, that fabric is cute. Okay. 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 I think something kind of loose and comfortable would be great. All right, I already changed that. I already changed that. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Let's do a couple notions cases first. I know if I don't, I will probably not do them <laughs> without the tie. Oh, is that a tie? Okay. So it's like a shaped hem. Cause I would just want like a more of like a boxy hem. I mean the, the, like in theory, the Cali shirt dress would be great, but, um, that just doesn't fit me very well. But I saw someone kind of, it was kind of wonderful. She, um, oh, this is actually, I wanted to save this and share it, but I don't follow this person. I just follow a hashtag and she posted in that hashtag and it was awesome. She had, uh, made the Cali shirt dress a bunch. It was the curvy sewing hashtag and she bought the, 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 she didn't buy it, but the, you know, the Cali just got an expansion for sizing. And so she printed it out and compared it to the one she had been sewing all this time. And, um, she, cause she had, uh, she had on her pattern, she had added a dart to it. She had graded it out. She'd done all these things to it to make it work for her size. And then when the expanded sizing came out, she actually printed her size out and compared it. It was awesome. It was really cool. I, I love that she did that. And they added 
an apex and the waist marking. Um, <laughs> whoops, a little overzealous there. My narcissism is showing. <laughs> um, she added, they added a waist and a, I can't remember something else, but I think that's really cool. Yeah, they updated the shoulder fit, and she noticed that as well. It's just more of a slope. Someone had said that they had moved the shoulder, but they to make it not slip back. But they what they did, I don't know if they did that, but they also made a slope. So that I was actually right. The other day I was like, well, that wouldn't work. They'd have to add slope, and that's what they did. And I don't know how much they did. Yeah. Yeah, I got that new pattern as well. Really, I need the, uh, I'm, f I'm fine in their size range, but my back just does some, like, it's just kind of like sway or something. Do I have a, okay. I didn't need a, a zipper pull on this one, apparently. All right, so let's trim this one up. Yeah, I kind of want to tackle that shirt again, but. I just like set and sleep. So her size had changed. Well, like, um, like her personal size, like her body hadn't changed, but you know, she had been using a pattern that she had modified. So she had modified it to fit her. And so it was kind of cool that she was like, Oh my gosh, it kind of, it comes in my size now. Let's see the diff, the, compare it and her pattern was it was just kind of lovely to see like it was um all hacked and taped together and it'd been well loved and and she had a little dart on there and her apex marked and then you see the nice clean copy and it looked a really similar to what she had crafted for herself to fit so that i thought that was pretty neat I would, I would be tempted to do the same thing if I were her. You know, if I had, like, <laughs> been like, okay, I made this thing. Yeah, so, um, the, well, the, the, they didn't have her size before. So when you look at her pattern, you see all the sizes on it. So it's like all the lines of all the sizes and then plus what she needed to get to her size. And then, and then she added a dart as well. So they actually extended their sizing and now it includes her size. <laughs> it's pretty neat. Flannelette Carolyn pajamas. Ooh. Nice. Would you want to do the timestamp for it, Beverly? <laughs> I don't know if you've seen, but I'm, I'm asking everybody nicely if they'll do timestamps. <laughs> I bet a couple people do them. Because they're making the garment already, like Penny was already making the Fairfield, Lisa was already making the Archer, Ray's going to make the Alcott. <laughs> if you're interested, let me know. You can send me an email and I'll give you the, I'll give you the steps. You just write down the time next to it, but you might not even need my uh, video. <laughs> I'm getting better about asking for help, aren't I? <laughs> what am I holding? There we go. I can't remember what I used for the uh, other fabric in this group. This fabric, it, it sold pretty good, but not as good as I thought it was going to, and I absolutely love it. <laughs> This was when Cotton and Steel, the original Cotton and Steel, it's like that linen cotton canvas. It's got that really great natural texture. Love this fabric. I really wish um, all the pieces I had cut in it that didn't um, get sewn was just yardage so because I, I would totally use the yardage. Really, Beverly? 
Thank you. Um, can you send me an email and then I'll reply? So so live at gmail.com or if I've ever emailed you, any email works. Um, but I'll give you the steps so then you have them handy. And you just write the time next to it. And then I'll, I'll add it to the video in the description. You don't have to do any of that. Thanks. If anyone wants to do one, let me know. Especially if you're already like sewing something, you don't have to go out of your way. The Caroline pajama top and bottom are, the Caroline pajamas are probably, the top is probably in the, the most viewed top, th top three of my videos. Um, bottoms in the top, probably 10. They get, they get looked at a lot. I always have trouble getting this to start. And it's the teeth of the zipper. They get hung up in something. Yeah, if you want to see what I'm talking about with that, Gal Ray, I bet if you look at the Kirby Sewing hashtag, you might easily spot it. Can you search that hashtag by what the most recent post is? Because that would be the best. Well, actually, yeah, because that would be a recent post. One more. One more zip double. I can do it. I can do it. There, then we'll have, uh, I think pretty much everything sewn for the sale. I'll need to photograph these things, so. Oh, look at that. That's kind of a boo-boo. Cut my corner too close there. And then I can do that zip double in the Shiba Inu. That fabric's like a bark cloth. It's really interesting. I wouldn't consider Shiba Inus to be a topic for a bark cloth, but oh, maybe I'm wrong. I'm going to fix this right here. This is actually kind of a pain to fix because I can't really make this come out that way unless I kind of like uh, slide it a little bit. But now that I've already uh, sewn through the vinyl, I really don't have much option. Let's see if I did it. Ah, I did. Wow. That's, I'm kind of surprised. I wasn't thinking that would work. Let's get rid of these threads, though. All right. It's a double. Oh, that's a great idea. All right. Have you found toweling anywhere? Because I have actually been wanting to make... Um, why is this down here? Is this long enough for this right here? No. <laughs> um, I've, I've been looking for toweling because I actually want to make uh, like just rags. Uh, just rags and, and nice toweling because you know how rags like the ones that are in the drawer. They're just some of them are just not that great. You know? Hi, button Velcro. Mm -hmm. I just loop them through the um, the uh, handle of the drawer. I have dish towels, I but I want rags. And have you found nice towels? Wow, Ray. Dang. 
You emptied a bookcase? Are you moving a bookcase? That's kind of the worst part about when you decide you want your bookcase somewhere else is all the, the books that are already in it. It's kind of dark, huh? That's why I never sew black on camera. I do all the binding first, but I'm gonna get this top kind of wrangled out of my way. I call this fabric Molly. This is what my dog looks like. She's part Shiba Inu. I don't think she's 100%, but I don't know. <laughs> oh, you do you really? You know, it used to be uh, pretty easy to find. You could even find it in different colors. And some of it was nicer than others, you know. I was just look. I had to buy a few towels for our new house. And I was so overwhelmed and disappointed. I was like, okay, this is... I want to know, is it going to work? I don't care about all the other details they were telling me. I want to know, is it going to work? Or is it just going to slide off, you know, like the, like the water? <laughs> I'm hoping that this zipper is a little short. So I'm hoping it's just my weird cutting on this. You know? I'm so in the mood for like a cozy mystery book. But I've been listening to this high fantasy book that man had taken forever I was like I must almost be done with this book there's 12 more hours yes exactly Beverly oh it's it's microfiber but it's absorbent see I don't find the microfiber usually to be absorbent that's interesting but I was thinking the same thing I was thinking about going and looking at an auto store that's funny you said that Oh, I should just make sure that I'm really, am I really that far off when I cut this? See, so the thing is, I cut the, this was cut at one point. The Shebas were cut by me recently. The zippers were cut who knows when. I'm literally trying to piece together all of this stuff that, uh, that I have. I need to cut this first. That's one thing about zipper by the yard. Your ends must meet where they need to end up. You can't just even it out once the pole's on there. Sorry. Slam. Anyone watch The Queen's Gambit, like I said? God, I loved that series. Binged it last weekend. See, look, if you don't get it lined up, this is what happens. See, now this isn't really lined up. So I could remove this and try and get these two directly across from each other. It's also good to have this flush with your edge like that. That's where I went wrong, probably. There we go. They're not good for hand drawing too flimsy. So what are they for? They're for dishes. Okay. I uh, don't use a dishwasher anymore. I just 
wash everything because it's just me and Michael and between the two of us, it's no big deal. Um, but I have a little rack. I don't actually dry my dishes. I just let them air dry. Maybe they'd get um, put away. <laughs> the way rearranging works, yeah. Maybe they'd get put away more often if I um, did dry them up. <laughs> Okay, so let's see. That looks pretty flat. That is on the seam. There is the notch. I'm starting to see um, some of the testers finished tests for the sewing which is nice it's like makes me feel like okay it's gonna be okay and they were like this is so easy so that made me feel good it was the wallaby not the pocket bucket yeah and it's so hot here Ray like not right now and dry but so it's pretty easy to air dry everything I do like the big pots and then get rid of them. Do I really though? <laughs> Actually, they sit there air drying too. The only thing I wa I dry right away is the really sharp knives and then I hang them back up. Because apparently it's not good for them, I guess, to have the water on them. We finally have a nice set of knives. <laughs> took, uh, you know, 20 years to get it. <laughs> My uh, friend, when she was staying and traveling in New Zealand, she, she said that they don't rinse the dishes. They wash them and, and then even with the soap on them, they, they uh, dry them on the rack. I don't know if that's actually true. And if every family did that, maybe it was just that family. And I thought that was really interesting. Maybe their soap would be um, fine doing that. I feel like here, some of our soaps are a little overkill. And they might uh, leave a taste. Wait a minute. What the heck? I sewed these wrong. I'm so, I usually always start the binding from the wrong side and I didn't on this. I need to pay attention that I do this a little better than I normally would. Wow, I can't believe that. To make that mistake, it's good it was this project. Ooh, I'm nailing it too. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky me. Carbon steel for sure need dry. Yeah. That's, I think, what it is. I did this one correct. Huh. Oh, you don't, Jill. That's interesting. Why is that? Is it just, you just always have done it that way? I'm wondering if your soap isn't as like gooey, like you know, there you know, famously, I think it's Dawn that they use to de-oil birds and the oil spills and things. And I'm thinking like, I don't think you'd have to rinse that stuff. It's pretty gooey. Like it, you can feel it. I have a wallet that I'm selling in my sale in this fabric too. <laughs> I think it's so cute. I got this at Hearts, I'm pretty sure. I was like, that's Molly. And it's such an interesting texture. It really is like, it's a, like a really lightweight bark cloth. Ghosts 
in the machine, right? Or me. <laughs> yeah, right, Jill? Yeah. Yeah, that's what she said. She was like, we could never do that here. She said that, yeah, that wouldn't be very good. <laughs> I'm going to use black thread for this step. I find it, that it is noticeable, but it actually doesn't detract as much as I always thought it would. Because if I sewed this part, because it's clear vinyl, right? If I sewed this in cream thread, um, I don't know why I'm back. The thing, I'm back stitching these because I do pull on them, but the thing is the back stitch can kind of creep into showing past the binding seams. You gotta be careful. But um, I think the reason I do that mo mostly do the black is because the cream thread doesn't show up as much, but at the same time, you're it, for me, it's distracting, but then I'm like, that, got, that thing has two different thread colors on it. And, I, and probably most people don't look at it like that, but it's just something to take into account. You know, someone might. It doesn't look weird to us right now because we're seeing the black everywhere and that's why, kind of why I just started doing it in the same color thread. Because I would sometimes go, oh, that one has white on the body and black everywhere else, so maybe I should um, pair it with something else, you know? Like it would be partially sewn things that would be matching up. Penny, happy Halloween. Oh, happy birthday. Very cool Halloween baby. <laughs> so are you a New Year's baby? Yeah, Jill, exactly. Because you weren't want renting off your dishes and then you learned you had to rinse them off. Yeah, that's what she was saying. She was, that would uh, keep you regular or something like that. She made that kind of quip. And I was kind of young at the time. Just not very worldly. And I was like, hmm, I just kind of filed it away. Like, okay, I got to figure that out before there was Google. <laughs> See, back then, we couldn't just be like slyly on our break going Google whatever our coworkers were talking about. We kind of had to figure it out. We made you a holiday. I do have something in an hour, so it's good. We're almost done here. What are you doing for your birthday, Penny? And thank you for the uh, the new round of timestamps for the Fairfield. Very well made and appreciated. Everyone's gonna love that. That watches that now. I think we made more today than we did the other day. But we made uh, project bags the other day too. Those are a little more work. Yeah, <laughs> it was about everyone's outcome from the soap. Yeah, so I'm not sure, but I, I remember my friend saying, um, she said something like, either something to the effect of like, oh, maybe they all have the runs here or the opposite. And it's because she didn't probably know that the soap was different. I don't know. Penny's like, what are we talking about? <laughs> Where's that thread at? Sneaky black thread. The one thing uh, that I would get returns on and it was really rare that um, we would get returns, but there was one thing that would happen and it was I wouldn't notice when I ran out of bobbin thread on black um, things because you couldn't see it very well. And then I'd go to sew the next thing, like say I would sew a, a handle onto a bag in black thread and I probably ran out halfway around the little box I sewed and then I would go to the next one and I think, oh, my 
my thread ran out and I wouldn't think to go back and look at that thing. And occasionally someone would say, oh, I got this thing, but the handle's barely on. I got good at not uh, missing that anymore. It taught me, so. Oh. Oh, you got a very labor intensive meal made for you. It's kind of a sad day that mask autocorrects now, isn't it? <laughs> That's cool. That sounds nice. Cricket was so cute when she got off work last night. She went out somewhere and got herself some food. And she rarely gets like things like a burger. It's just not her type of thing to food, but she really wanted that. Or she probably got grilled cheese. And um, she came home and she goes, I got Molly some fries. She doesn't even like fries. And so she got Molly some fries because Molly, whoever had Molly before us, fed her junk food, like legit, like fast food. You can tell because the first time I brought home fries one time, it was like nine months after we had her. Michael was out of town. I was starving at work and I was like, I'm going to go get junk food. And so I went and got some. I got home and I was sitting there on the coffee table. I was, I was trying to record something on TV. I was sitting there eating. I was so hungry. And she was sitting there like all excited. Like I thought she was going to wet herself. And I was like, what's going gotten into you? And I realized she was, she hadn't had fries or smelled fries like that since we'd gotten her. Like, so, and that's what it was. And so Cricket's like, I got her some French fries. And so, um, uh, she brought them in last night and it was like 11 o'clock at night. I was like, oh my gosh, like, I want to go to bed. I don't want to feed them fries. <laughs> and, uh, so we gave her, a, gave them a couple and then I wanted to go to bed. So I was trying to go up the stairs and Loki wouldn't come up. Molly jetted up the stairs, but Loki wouldn't. He was just staring at me from the bottom. I was like, what are you going to do? What? I can't trust you down here. You got to come with me. And I was like, oh, it's the it's the bag. The bag with the fries was still sitting on the counter because I just was going to take it out to the garbage <laughs> the next day. And that's what it was. And so I, I was like, oh, okay, I got to go deal with this right now. And so I went back, half back down the stairs. And Molly was like, wait, we're talking about the fries again. And she jetted back down the stairs. I was like, no, I'm not giving you guys any more fries. You guys need to go to bed. <laughs> My little junk food dogs. She would never eat treats or anything. She's always really suspicious. So it's not like we were depriving her, you guys. <laughs> Loki, Loki's into it, but he doesn't bake for stuff like that. He doesn't bake at all. Look, Molly will. He's kind of like, why is she so excited? I'll take that. Pugs notoriously like think about food constantly. And he does, but he doesn't bake. It's kind of funny. Um, but Molly will, but fries are her thing. Like that's, her, that's her comfort food. I was in a, uh, speaking of autocorrect, I was chatting in a stream the other day, a stream where they don't know that I am a sewing streamer. <laughs> and, um, I wrote the word seeing and it autocorrected it to sewing. Do you guys... Do you guys know, like, every time I type the word sewing, it changes it to seeing, right? You probably have the exact same thing happen to you. It never does the reverse when I type the word sewing. And um, I was both, like, shocked and horrified and, uh, like, mad. I was like, wait a minute, this is the one time you do it and I'm not in a stream that knows anything about sewing? So <laughs> she learned how to sew last week. What did she make? She wants Shiba Inu fabric. Aww. Isn't this so cute? That chubby little face. You know what? Instead, you could follow a couple of Shiba Inus on Instagram like Maru Taro or someone like that. And uh, she can get her fill of real Shiba Inus. My Molly isn't a, isn't like, I'm sure she's not full blooded. I didn't even know what a Shiba Inu was until so many people stopped us to ask if that's what she was. I just thought she was like a little cattle dog mutt. But now I know that she is, 
she's got other characteristics like um why does this feel weird like um her belly turns black in the sun other dogs do that too loki's does too um she's got spots on her tongue uh she does this weird little thing where <clears throat> say we've been traveling or gone and she we come home she'll she'll whimper at things she's excited to see it's a lot of scraps some together. Yeah, that's great though. She's quilting. That's awesome. Hey, and if she's doing it and you're not doing it for her, it's better even for you, right? Because the Cricut's version of sewing was making me do it. <laughs> but she doesn't have that like this chubby little face that the Shibas have. And she does have a she does do the squinty eye thing occasionally, but the Shiva really looks squinty eyed all the time. Alright. My last thing for the sample sale. This is pretty cute. Cute fabric. I got this at Hearts Fabric, Penny. And you can get your discount with it. She does know how to sew now. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, I have not. Social dilemma. Oh. I know. It's so funny how my phone is getting smarter than it did that that one time. That turned out pretty cute. I'm, I, I'm a little better at not getting these torqued today. Let's see what we made. All right, we have three zip doubles and three six nine eleven notions cases look at that nice guys thanks so much for keeping me company not bad, huh? Let's see it all a little better. I've I've been looking at old videos of because people have been needing the for the timestamps and um I noticed that my camera was lower and I kinda liked it. I kinda like that setup at my old place. The Queen's Gambit is Netflix. I just heard them interviewed today, but I only caught the last like thirty seconds so I didn't get to hear the interview. It's it's really good. I do need another show now. Do I really? Do I really? Cool. Well, um, I need to figure out what we're sewing next week. I'm waiting to hear back from someone. But I'll come up with something. I have a few things lurking over there. <laughs> yes, but well, these were all chicken boots fabrics here. The oh, same with this one, but this is on spoon flower though. Uh, but this was from a chicken boots project, but this I got at a quilt show when I was with my mom and this I got at hearts fabric last summer. <laughs> it's, it's so cute. I just love that texture too. Look at the textures. Can you see the texture? Very bark cloth ish. I have the auto focus off, so it's kind of hard to see. <laughs> It was Penny. It looked, um, it looked, I was kind of intrigued by it. <laughs> I get all the young adult things recommended to me because Netflix thinks I'm cricket. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I'm always like, mm, I am not interested in that. When are you going to learn? <laughs> I'm the one who's had the account the longest. And for some reason I'm only getting her recommendations, you know? I think the only thing I'm not going to sew for the sale is this uh, ideal bag. That's on Netflix as well. And she's like um, Sherlock's little sister, right, Penny? She's, you know, a little detective with plunk and plunk? Pluck. Pluck and spark. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's Netflix, exactly. <laughs> 
You enjoy, okay, good. <laughs> All right, well, I'm sorry I don't have a schedule for next week. I'm sure I'll be here doing something. So I'll figure it out soon. I'd like to make some jeans. Are you guys interested in jeans or have I made too many of those? Cause uh, I'm kind of thinking about making some jeans. Um, I'm thinking about making the Ames jeans by Cash and Rep because I haven't made those. So at least it would be something new. He came for the clothes, stayed for the movie. Yeah, see, uh, Queen's Gambit. The, the clothes in that are really great. I saw someone, I actually Googled that gal. Did I tell you this? I Googled like, is this a real person? Is this, is this chess prodigy based on a real person? And I just saw this like little blurb of an article when I Googled it. And, they, and it was a female chess player who was very famous apparently in the chess world. And she was like, well, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure anyone on a uh, Valium would do this great. <laughs> at a chess game it oh enola holmes is from wait who's from stranger things and which girl got you ray <laughs> oh your your names are in such a pretty rainbow on my screen right now it's like it's like i love it when it turns to the rainbow but i like it when you guys have a set color so i can see who's who Penny's three different colors right now on my stream screen. Oh, I know I wanted to show you guys. All right, so. Okay, good. I thought I asked, I actually pushed a button. So this is what I have for kits. Well, I don't know about kits. See, I have, I, I just don't know what to do with all these cut pieces. So I have a ton of zip doubles. And this is all I have. Look at this. I have these weren't these right here were in production when the fire happened. So look, they got they got uh, prepped. I just don't know what to do with these. I can't sew all these myself. I don't have enough vinyl, so I can't make full kits. I can include zipper. I can include the ribbon handle. I can't include binding. Enola is the girl. Which one is she? Is she in part one? Because I only watched part one, the first season, I mean. I just don't know. Do you think I could sell this or is this too specific? Because if it is, I'll just maybe give it to someone who quilts it up, you know? There's all the pockets. Pockets and handles are bound. But I don't have any more binding of each of these. Maybe the purple. The purple I could actually provide binding for. Pretty sure. This one I can't and this one I can't. I used it for mask making. <sighs> yeah, that's all I have. That's all the zip doubles. So I'm not sure what to do with these. I was thinking I could sell them with like the zipper and the ribbon. Then you get the top and the pocket and uh, a video on how to sew it this way with this kind of uh, half of a zipper. And I would sell it for like $5, you know, like something so that they don't just get cut up into quilts or tossed out. I just don't want to throw this away. I have this dilemma on just a few things. I'm, I'm pretty getting down there. It's good, but I don't know. It's a lot. Look at all those. Two p layers is one zip double. So like this is how many rainbow I have. I have, you know, 12. I don't know. Oh, really? 11? Is that her name? Yeah. You think so? Okay. Well, maybe I'll try. I just can't sew it all, you know? And see, someone would not have the binding for the top and the bottom. So they would have the this, they have this binding and the pocket, but they don't have this or this. 
11. It is a hi April. It is. Oh. That is her. Oh, and Enola. That's her? Really? Oh my gosh. That's awesome. I'll watch it just for that. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks, you guys. Thanks for the ideas. Um, and thanks for hanging out with me while I sew some things in production. I'll have some things next week. i am got to pull something together quick because I actually have a few things I really want to do with you guys. So, cool. Have a good weekend. Happy Halloween. Stay safe out there. Eat all the candy. At least you don't have to hand it out, right? It's all yours. <laughs> okay, well, good. That's good to know, Tanya. I'll, I just didn't want to, like, put it together and people would be like, why would I want that, you know? But then it'll come with the video on how to sew, the way I sew it, with the half zipper. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, you could do, you don't even have to use vinyl, you could use fabric. Okay, cool, April. Yeah, you're into the jeans too, okay. I love sewing jeans. I love sewing jeans. <laughs> okay, yeah, you too. Okay, I'll see you guys next week sometime. I'll let you know. I'll try and have an, a, a schedule posted on Tuesday. Maybe Wednesday. <laughs> All right, happy Halloween. Bye.